In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft Publisher to create a professional looking book sleeve. I created this and it didn't take very long and a lot of people commented on how professional looking it looks. So we're going to have a go at creating one together. So the first thing I've done is I've taken a real book and I've measured the dimensions of it. OK, so what I've done then is I've created a template in Publisher of how big the book sleeve is going to be. This section here is the spine and that's where the writing down the side of the book is going to be visible. These black sections here, I've just put black there for now just to mark them off because I want you to realize these are the flaps that are going to be folding inside the book. It's going to keep the book cover on. This is the back of our book cover. This is the front. This is how I'm going to create my book cover. If we look here, I've got the front, the back, the spine, and I don't really need anything on these for now because I'm just going to fold those into my real book so that it holds in. So how can you access this that I've created? Well, if you go to the shared T and go to everyone, year five, ICT, create a book cover, I've got a little folder in here. Let's have a quick look, create a book cover. Um, we'll come to the master images in a bit. I've created book cover master. And in this document, there is a copy of that sleeve for you. I've not given you the other one, the completed one, because you've got to do it yourself. But this is a nice template for you to get started with. So I'm going to close that down. There's a few ways I could copy and paste this or I could save it as. Just for now, I'm going to press right click and copy, click away, right click and paste. And I've made myself a copy now. Just so people know it's my copy, I'm going to right click it again. Just press rename and I'm going to rename this Mr. Skywalker. Waggle. OK, I'm going to click away. And now this is now a perfect copy of that template. This is the one we're going to work on in this video. So I'm going to open it up. And here I have the template that I've already made for you. If you're interested in making your own template for your own size book, then come and see me and I'll show you what I did to take the measurements and turn this into a template and publisher. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get some images so that I have a background. Let me just swap over to my, my original. I have a nice background, something to start with for my Elephants in the Wall book cover. Now I've gone, um, I've gone through Google and I've, I've saved you a few images that you can use. You might have just seen them in the master images folder. Feel free, if you want to, to use Google to look for some images that you like. I mean, the story is called Elephant in the Walls, so I could, you know, I could type in wallpaper and see what comes up. But I'm in school, it's all blocked. Um, wallpaper, old. Let's have a quick look. And so these, these, these might be some of the things that you would like to use on your book cover. The other thing we do need to bear in mind is that under tools and usage rights, we want, we want to use images that we're actually allowed to use um, with copyright. So it's always good to start thinking about that. But if you don't want to go through the hassle of trying to find your own images, you can just use the ones that I've I've downloaded for you today. So if we go back to the original file, I can insert pictures. So I'm going to put bring in a picture from the shared T. So if I click on shared T and then we know where we were going, we're going to everyone. Um, year five. ICT and then just create a book cover. And if I look in here in the master images, I've got these different files here. I'm going to change the view slightly here just so I can actually see which images there are. If, if you ever want to change the view, there's lots of different options here so you can have a quick look. I'm going to change it to large icons. Now, I don't want to start with all these different images here. I want to start with a nice background that I can build on top of. So I'm going to click the wallpaper here. I'm going to press insert. And that will put in this background for me. Now, 
at the moment, it's right in front of everything else. It's in front of the black borders. It's in front of the, the spine, the little box I've put in place so we know where the spine is. So I want to send it back a little bit. Um, I also need to resize it. So if you click on the boxes in the corners, you can change the size of this image. Now, I want it to be the entire size of the white box because I don't want it to be any white spaces on my book cover. I'm pleased with how that looks. So I'm going to click on it now and so that it's not in the front, there's a little option here when you click on an image, click forward or send backwards. We want to send it right to the back. So I'm going to click send backwards. I can keep clicking it or you can just press send to back if you press the drop down arrow. And I'm going to click away from that now. Be mindful as we work throughout this document now, you might accidentally drag this and move it somewhere you don't want to. If you ever make any mistakes during this process, just press the undo button once and it will put it back to how it was. So I'm off to a good start. I like the way that this image looks. And if I go back to my original, that's the image that I used in that. The other things that I had on a book cover were the book title, some photos and images. I had the author's name. I had the writing going down the side, for the spine. I had a little blurb. And I also had this, which I think really makes it look authentic. The barcode, uh, skywalkerbooks.com. And ISBN, if you're not sure what an ISBN is, every single book has its own unique ISBN. It's kind of like a fingerprint so that we can identify what book is what. And I've even put in this little logo from the Forestry Commission to say that it was from a recycled paper. It's these little touches that are going to make it look really realistic. So if I go onto Google, I have already um, Googled a little bit. Um, we, we had a look at the Wolves and the Walls, which this book is a sequel to. And I kind of like how it's very old and tattered, the way the background looks. And that's kind of why I got this image here. Um, but if I look at other book covers, um, we often have the same sort of layouts. We have, you know, a nice background, nothing too, you know, in your face, no nice colour or a nice simple pattern. We have the name of the author, the name of the text, and maybe some extra little um, quotes. And on the back, we have the blurb, publisher logo, and the ISBN. Okay, so these all look very similar, and this is the sort of thing that we're going to do. We're going to use these as inspiration. For hours. I like these ones that have one big image that goes all the way around. And again, we've got that with our wallpaper on this. So the first thing I want to do is decide what images do I want to put in my book cover. Um, I might want to keep it exactly the same as this, this waggle one that I created, but I might want to create something slightly different. Um, so if I press insert and go to pictures it should automatically bring that the last folder we inserted from so we've got the wallpaper i've actually downloaded two or three different elephant images for you to use and this time i'm thinking i might use um maybe an elephant's face on the front cover so i quite like this one this profile of an elephant if i click this one and insert it let's see what happens OK, excellent. I've got this image now and I can move it around. But the problem is with this image is that it currently has this thick black border and this white area. Now, I don't want any of that on my final design. I just want the elephant's head. So I need to find a way and publish it to cut out his head. Well, fortunately, there are some tools that I can use to help me cut out this elephant's head. The first thing I want to do is crop off that black border. If I press the crop tool, you'll notice around the image now, and I press the select away, you see there were some white selection tools for resizing. If I press crop, they now change into these little bars and they give me the option to crop or cut the edges of my image off. So if I wanted to make it really tiny or really big, I could. So I'm just going to crop off the black borders of this image for now. Let's have a quick look and crop if I click away. So the black border's gone. So now I just need to get rid of this white section. So if I click on the image again, make sure you've clicked it. 
over here in the picture tools, there's a section called recolor. If I click recolor and go down to set transparent color, it gives me a new tool here. My, my normal cat cursor has been replaced with this little selection tool. And what I'm going to do is if I choose the white, <gasps> magic, it's actually taken away the white from my image. I can click away now and I now have an elephant head that has been cut out and it looks really professional. So where am I going to put this elephant? Mm. So I might have him here. Bear in mind I want the elephants in the walls to be written over here. So I might have him over at the top poking down. Um, I don't actually want mm, some of that section there so I might just crop it a little bit more try and get rid of a little bit more of his leg. Crop. I might rotate him a little bit using this tool so he's peeking in a little and put him up here so that he's poking his head through. Now you might notice that that's overlapping the black. Now what I can do is just click on the black section, bring that forward and then all of a sudden he is there poking his head through. I think that was quite nice. The next thing I need to do then is insert another image to start making this look really good. Um, so I'm going to insert pictures again. This time I might just go for the elephant trunk. And this time you're quite lucky. I've downloaded a certain special file type that doesn't need you to select and remove background colour. Um, this is a special file that has that done for you. Now, I, I'm not too keen on the way it's blurred out there because it just looks like it's growing out of the wall. So I might just crop that down a little bit more to there so it's a bit of a straighter edge. And I might just have this so then it's straight and it's coming at the top of the book like that. Almost like there's an elephant in the book and he's poking his trunk out. Now, if you ever overlap the edge here, like this. Don't worry, um, all it will print is what's on the page there. This here, this little section won't be printed, but I, I can line it up quite nicely there and it'll go. So I've got a few different images on the front. Um, I just want another image or two on the back. Let's have a quick look at what I, I had here. So I had oh, this brilliant image I found of a little girl poking through a crack in the wall. That ties in so nicely to the story that we wrote. So I'll definitely want that image in. Um, I might even put that on the front cover. We'll have a look in a sec. Um, so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to insert picture. And I'm going to grab this picture of the child looking through the paper. Now, you can probably guess what I did to get rid of the white. Because again, we don't want the white. We want it to look like she's peeking through the wallpaper that we've already put. So if I go to recolor, set transparent color, and then click on this section, it's automatically cut all of that out for me and give me the effect that I want. Do you know what? I've had to think about it, and I think that I am going to move it around a little. I do like the idea of the little girl poking her right out on the front page on this one and having a look at what's going on. I might even make the elephant a little bit bigger. Move him over. That's the joy of Publisher. We've got all these different elements, these pictures and images and things, and we can just move them around until we're happy. So I might move that at an angle as well. Oh, maybe a bit more of an angle. A bit of a funky angle there. And remember, we don't want it to print out on the black, so we'll bring the black forward. Chop that off. Okay, so it's, it's different to the one that I've got already, but I think that's good because I want you guys to be able to create your very own as well. Now, the next thing I need to bear in mind is I need the title. I need it to say the elephants in the wall. Oh, I'm starting to worry that there's no room for the title now, so I might make them a bit smaller again. So the elephants in the walls is the title. So I'm going to insert some word art. Uh, I'm just going to choose one of these for now and I'm going to change the way it looks after. I'm not just going to use it as it comes. 
Um, I always like to just have this one because it's got a nice, nice font that I can read. So the elephants in the walls. I could do it as one big word like this. Now, when you create word art like this, anything you type, I will try and squeeze into one big long line. If you look, I've got the elephants in the walls by Elf Skywalker, and these are actually all separate text boxes. That's one, that's one, that's one, and that's one. The reason why I did that is because it gives me a bit more freedom, so I don't just have to have the elephants, oops, the elephants in the walls all just written along like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click it, or click on it once, and I'm sorry, right click it, and press this button here, that's edit text. I'm just going to have the, I'm going to start there, the, oh wait a minute now, I'm going to have that here. And what this gives me the freedom to do now is I can turn it a bit of an angle. I can change the colour if I want to, I can use some of these up here. Shape fill will change the colour of your word art shape. Shape outline will change the colour of the outline. And you can even, if you go to weight, make the edge a bit fatter, if you think that looks a bit better. The other thing I need to bear in mind is that I want a different font. So you're going to have to go through and try and find a font that you would like to use. I think that shape outline's a bit fat. So I'm going to go back into here, font. Now the problem is in Publisher, it doesn't actually show you the fonts um, as a preview. You have to keep clicking on them to get the font that you want. Um, what should we go for? We want something a little bit playful, maybe a little bit creepy. The font that I used in my other one, my Waggle, actually cheated a little bit. I downloaded a font that you guys don't have. So we're going to try and just use a font that you guys have access to. Um, right, let's have a quick look. Well, that one might be nice, chiller. So if I press OK on that, the, it kind of looks a bit creepy. Now I've seen that, I definitely want it to be a different colour. I might make it black. Maybe with a black outline as well. Maybe with a white outline. Oops. Undo a white outline. Oh yeah, interesting. I might make the white a little bit thinner again. Yeah, V. Now, if you like the way that looks, if you like that um, font and that text, then rather than pressing insert word art and doing it all again, you can actually just right click it copy it and then click away and then paste so paste is up here paste and you actually have a copy here where all you need to do is right click and press edit text and I can just change the text and it will give me the same font and the same settings that I just have so the elephants are quite like that I might make the elephants, because that's a big part of our title, I might make it a little bit more, um, make it stand out a bit. So I might try, oh, it's already bold. So it's already bold, so what can I do to make that stand out? Well, on the last one, if you notice, I went with a colour scheme of black and white, and I actually inverted the colours. I made the inside white and the outside black, where on the rest of the text, the inside was black and the outside was white. So I might do the same here. Let's see how that looks. If I go to Format, Shape Fill White, Shape Outline Black. Yeah, that's quite that's quite cool. You could always change the font if you want to, but I might go with that. That's okay. Um, just so you're happy with it, you can have a quick look and see if there's any other colours that you think stand out better. Ooh. That's nice. I might even go for that. So if we thicken it out a bit. Oh yes. So I'm going to go for the elephants, and I'm going to copy the the again. 
and copy and then paste and you've guessed it you need to change this text here to in the walls the elephants in the walls again if you drag it around it will make it bigger make it the size that you want if you click on this icon here you can rotate it the elephants in the walls cool if you want it to move just ever so slightly you can actually use the arrow keys up down left and right to move it in a far more focused way let's say you want to move this just ever so slightly it's lettering I could tap left 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 or right right and it just gives you that a little bit more precision so move my elephants in the walls perfect right the last thing i want on the front is my name because i'm the author so i'm going to copy that one more time actually i think it's already copied so if i just press paste again it'll just give it me i might change the font because i want the title of the story and my name to be very different i don't want people to think the story is called the elephants in the walls mr skywalker so I'm going to edit this again, but this time I'll go for a different, a different font. Um, let's have Ariel Skywalker. Well, I think that's quite nice. So move that over. Let's see how that looks. And I change the color, shape, fill, that shape, that one. you've got to see who the author is and there we go now one of the things I've noticed here is that that looks like a bit of an empty space so I might be able to move my elephant a bit so that he fills that space a little better like that now what's great about that even though his head popping off the page is that when I go to print if I press file print it will generate a print preview and it'll show you the actual bit that will print there. So when we chop it, it will just look like that, which I'm very happy with. A straight edge and the elephant poking his head down, filling that gap a lot better. So go back. I'm happy with that. That's fine. Right, so I've got my front cover done and dusted. Brilliant. And I've even got an image on the back cover that I'm happy with as well. So what do we need to do next? So I've got this, this bit of text here was just a little bit of a quote from the story. Let me just ungroup that. And I put that in as a way of showing off how good the story is is and just a bit of a tease so a crash the elephants came stomping at the wall tusks scraping feet stomping trunks tooting just to give the reader a bit of a taste of what's to come so i'm just going to cheat today because i've already come up with this i'm going to copy and paste that into my new one you guys can come up with your own um based on some of the work that you've done so i want this to be a word art again so I'm going to paste it into here. There we go. Um, I'm happy to have that all as one. Uh, what was the tip I used before? Chiller was quite cool. I want this to be very easy to read. That's the other thing. At the end of the day, we need people to read this, otherwise, they'll be excited. This, for example, nice font. I guarantee once we put that out, it's going to be very difficult to read. Um, so, oops, see how I accidentally moved things there, so I'm just going to press undo, put things back, make sure it's on the right bit. So, right click again. I want, I want to get a much easier to read font, something a bit more interesting. Oh, I like that one. That's nice. Bold, chunky, easy to read, clear, wonderful. So, 
crash. The evidence comes from the water scraping piece and then comes to it. Mm. You know what? Change of mind. That's a bit boring. Yeah, a bit better. Um, I want my shape to be filled with black. I want the crash. I might have to have a separate because the gap is too big. So I'm going to cut that, do that. And move this around a little bit. So I want that there. You know what? You can even read that over the elephant's trunk. I might have it over. Um, and I might, you know, what's only one word. I'll copy and paste. Copy, paste, edit text. And the word I had before was crash. And you know what? It's going to be huge. So let's make it a little bit bigger. I still want it bigger than the rest, though. That's great. Give it an angle. Crash. What an eye catching back over there. So, crash. The elephants came stomping out of the water, scraping feet, stomping trunks, tooting. There you go. Again, we've got the same information as on the other one, other one but presented in a slightly different way. Now, the other section that I did have was more of a detailed synopsis. So, if I copy and paste this, copy. Uh, copy, combined, and paste, click in here, copy, paste, so there we go. Um, one of the things I did to make this a little bit more eye-catching was, uh, I'll show you. Just quickly get rid of that. Delete that. Right. That text actually drew a text box instead of a word um, word art. I drew a text box the size I wanted it to be, and inside I put my writing. You can't see it against that wallpaper is the issue. So uh, what I did was when I when I choose this box, I'll make sure I've chosen the right bit. Yeah. Uh, if I go to this is text box tools, drawing tools, the shape fill, I want to fill the shape with white. Okay. That's great. But the problem is the edges are really sharp. So what I want to do is make them a little bit smoother. So if I go to shape effects and if I go to soft edges, it will actually Soften the edges of that shape for me. Shape effects, soft edges. Probably wasn't soft enough. Oh, there we go. Soft edges, shape effects. Oh, shape outline. Shape effects, soft edges. Or oh, probably too much there. There's a number of effects you can use here. If you want, you can have reflections. You can have 3D effects. But for now, we go undo, undo. And do that's where I kind of wanted it to be. I'm happy with that. Just notice this the word elephants here, it's actually gone from one line down to the other with just a little hyphen. I don't want that to happen. So, what I'm going to do is click on this text box and make sure it's selected. And when I do text box here, oh, let me just select some text. There's a box here called hyphenation. Untick it, get rid of that. I don't want words to be going across the edge of lines. I want it to look more like this. So, so far, I've done a, you know, a really good job of creating a book cover. I'm gonna quickly press save. You need to get into a good habit of pressing save all the time um, so that you don't lose any work. I'm nearly there, there's a few things I need to do. If you notice, I need to get a title, then the spine. So the Elephants in the Walls by Al Skywalker. And I need to do this as well. I need to put in some information of the barcode and the websites and the ISBN. So that's a nice, quick, easy job.
for me to do. If I insert a shape, and I'm just going to have this little rectangle, and if I drag it here, I want it to be round about there. If I select it and drag it around, it should automatically snap to a place where it thinks is the middle. So, yeah, I think that's that's worked it out for me. Um, I want it to be, I can click on these to give me options, shape fill white, shape outline white as well. I don't want a black outline on that. And I still think it looks a little bit short. I want to make it a bit longer. About there. So the few bits and pieces I had on there were this logo and this barcode. And I've actually saved those for you on the image file. So you can go to insert pictures, barcode and FSC logo. We'll just do the barcode to begin with. Way too big. Make it much smaller and drag it down to where we want it to be. Click away. Happy with that. Insert pictures, FSC logo, insert. So if you notice, this has actually got a little bit of extra stuff here that I, I don't want to keep. So I'm going to press crop. And like I did before, crop down to only keep the bit that I want. Crop. And I can resize. Don't worry that it's knocking all the text in the background out of the way. It will. Uh, it will all shift back. Still too big. Okay, let me click away. Looks good. I'm going to click it one more time and use my arrow keys. I'm going to carefully move it to where I want it to be. Perfect. The last thing I need is my little text box. So this is my text boxes are useful. I can draw a text box here in this space. And I can insert the information that I want. Um, I had the price of the book, obviously, scopebooks.com, and then I made up a number for my ISBN. So if I just go here, I'm going to paste that in, be lazy. Oh, if you ever notice that these edges turn red, then what's happened is that um, all of the information in there isn't fitting in the box. You've actually got more information than you can see. So you need to just make it bigger until you can see everything. So that's good. I'm happy with that. Um, it's overlapping the barcode a little bit. So if I make that just a little bit smaller, that's fine. And then make my barcode a little bit smaller. And then move it over my arrow keys. Then should be good. And I've got one tiny last job to do, which is the text down the side of my book. And then I am done. Now, you don't have to keep in this. Um, I've, I've made this, this shape for the spine. I've given it a slight grey outline just so you know where it is because we don't want it moving. We don't want it moving anywhere. We want it to stay here because that's where the spine is. Um, if you select it, I've already got it so that you can write text in there. So I type in the elephants in the walls. Then I'll do a few spaces by L Skywalker. Then that's great. I need to make it a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna make my text a little bit bigger. Oh, let's have a quick look. Oh, I think the issue is that this is in the way here. We want this. To wrap text, we want it to be non, and then that won't get in the way. Sorry. So the elephants in the walls by Al Skywalker. I might make the title actually just a little bit bigger than my name because you know what people see it is. You can change the font on that. You can change anything you want. But there we are. I have now finished my very own book cover. I can press save on that again now. Save. And if I was to print this, because I've already measured it out for you, it would print out and fit on one of the books in my classroom absolutely perfectly, and it would look really fantastic. Have a go, see how you get on. I want to see some Elephants in the Walls book covers that we can put up on our display. If you're feeling really up for a challenge, go home, 
and have a go at making one for your very own book. Create your own book cover. You can even be clever if you want to and create your very own DVD sleeve using the same technique. Let me know how you get on.